Well, hello, good morning, and what a treat to be able to share this stonking Bible passage with you today. And I hope that in the next 10 minutes or so, you will love it as much as I do. But let's start with a recap of the story. So, God's chosen people, the Israelites, have been without the Ark of the Covenant, that's the, the visible presence of God, for 20 years after it was taken by the Philistines, who are the baddies of the story. And we join this tale when they have just got it back. And the prophet Samuel, who was their leader, is taking them through a period of repentance and turning back to God. And the Israelites are all gathered together on this mountain, worshiping God. Now, when the Philistines hear what they're up to, they realize that the Israelites will be distracted. So they seize the moment and they sneak up to attack them. Now the Israelites, who are busy, busy worshipping God and presumably unarmed and certainly not battle ready, they see them coming in the distance and they panic and they plead with Samuel to cry out to God to rescue them. And God hears them, he hears their cries and he does something pretty flair. It says, the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into a panic. I don't know if you remember being a little bit frightened of thunder as a child. It's not that kind of thunder. This is the kind of thunder that makes battle-hardened soldiers so terrified that they panic and are easily beaten by the Israelites, who had presumably been able to grab their weapons and set upon the invaders, slaughtering them all. But this is such a startling and miraculous victory that Samuel sets up a stone of remembrance, calling it Ebenezer, and saying, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Well, this Ebenezer stone, which was probably more like an altar, was a visible sign of remembrance for the Israelites of what God had done for them. It was a reminder of God's rescue and a declaration that God has been and is and will be faithful. And it was a way to say thank you to God. So this stone, this memorial, marks their remembrance, their faith and their gratitude that thus far the Lord has helped us. In 1743, Robert Robinson was eight years old when he lost his father and without a welfare state to support him, his impoverished mother sent him to London as a barber's apprentice. Well, sadly, he fell in with a bad crowd and he spent his teenage years drinking, gambling and causing some serious trouble. But then one evening, a very bizarre chain of events led to him persuading his whole gang to attend an evangelistic church meeting, mainly so that they could go and have a laugh heckling the preacher. But instead, God broke his heart and Robert Robinson was plucked out of the dangerous path that his life was headed down. And a few short years later, Robert Robinson became a preacher himself. Now in grateful recognition to God, he wrote the beautiful hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, you may know it, in which he refers to raising an Ebenezer. And this was his way of publicly saying, thank you to his saviour. This song was his Ebenezer stone, a reminder not only to him, but to us today, that God rescues us and we have so much to be thankful for because Thus far, the Lord has helped us. So this Ebenezer stone, which actually means stone of help, it served as a marker of how much God has helped his people. It was a way of commemorating and remembering just how far they had come. And we have these Ebenezer moments too, don't we? This isn't just reserved for the people of the Old Testament. These are moments when you know, without any doubt, that God has intervened in your life. And marking these moments, finding a way to remember them, can help us and others in our walk with God today. 
Now, some people keep a prayer journal to remember when God has been providing wisdom and guidance and answering prayers. Others, well, some people might get a tattoo as a sign of remembering times when God has spoken to them particularly clearly. Some people plant a tree to mark times of trial and triumph. Now, this picture behind me is an Ebenezer for me. It's a picture of Prospect Park in Brooklyn, where we lived for a couple of years when the boys were little. And it was here that I first felt the stirrings of God speaking to me about ordination. This was a place where God was doing something new and profound, and which I remember every time I see this picture. And did you know that the people of St Michael's Church, our church family, 100 years ago, as a mark of remembrance after World War I, they bought a patch of land near the church, and 100 years later, that area of grass served as a lifeline to many families in our community when we were suddenly landed in lockdown. The church field is an Ebenezer stone, a place where we can remember what God has done, but also see what God continues to do. It's a place of remembrance for our church all of that time ago, for us today and for future generations to come because thus far the Lord has helped us. And that's the thing about an Ebenezer stone. It's not just about remembering. It's also a declaration of future faith and a way of building faith in ourselves and in others. So when Samuel stuck a whopping great stone altar at Mizpah, he wanted it to be a conversation point, something that people wandering past would stop and look at and say, what's that? What's the story there? And in sharing the story of God's rescue, God's intervention, our faith and the faith of those around us is increased. Now, some of us will already be getting excited about the idea of setting up a replica of Stonehenge in the local park, whereas others of us may well be thinking, do you know what? I am desperately waiting for my Ebenezer moment, for the Lord to thunder with loud thunder. I want that. I'm waiting for God to intervene and rescue me now in my situation. And this is why it's important that we share our testimonies, testimonies with one another, our stories of where God is on the move in our lives, our Ebenezer moments, because we remind each other that God is faithful. Our shared stories of God's intervention are there to encourage us to hang on in there, to keep the faith when we feel like we're in a time of trial. And we've all known times when we know that without God, we would not have made it through. We need to hear the stories of when we have made it through so that all of our faith can be built up. And we want to be a community who celebrates God's work in our lives. So, I have a proposal. I would love to collate a book of Ebenezer moments from our church family, from all of us, not for publishing, just for us. This could be a book of answered prayers, a collection of stories when we have seen God working in our lives, a book full of gratitude, remembrance and faith that will build our community of faith both today and in the future. Just imagine if we had such a book from those people who bought the church field 100 years ago, if we could get an insight into what God was doing in their lives, how he was moving their community, what they were praying for, oh, what a treasure trove that would be. So I'd love to collate a record of our church family's story so far, because thus far, the Lord has helped us. Will you help me do that? Will you consider writing a little account of what God has been doing in your life, either in the past or the present, either anonymously or named, either a couple of lines or pages, 
and I will put them together and we will keep this Ebenezer book at church, a snapshot in the life of our church in 2020, a unique point in history, ready to be read by anyone who needs encouragement that God is on the move and something to encourage future generations of the St Michael's Church family when we are long gone. These stories, well, they don't need to be as dramatic as the rescue of the Israelites and the consequent slaughtering of the Philistine army, although those stories are pretty cool. As moving and important will be the personal moments of God's blessing. The arrival of a longed for baby, recovery from an illness, an experience of God's peace. The stories of times when God has intervened in your life for which we are grateful, that we want to remember and that will build up all of our faith. Thus far, the Lord has helped us and our stories are not over yet. We trust that he will continue to help us because we see him at work around us. And in a moment, I'm going to play the song that Robert Robinson wrote as his Ebenezer. And as you enjoy the words and think about what he's saying, perhaps you could drop me an email with your story, or you could start thinking about what you might be able to share. What are your Ebenezer moments and how might they be useful to build up the faith of our church community? <laughs> 